I'm Robert with Nomium, and we're taking a look at the top 10 things that you can do in Zoom when you're facilitating meetings and workshops. How you see other people's videos on the screen and how you see your video on the screen can help you monitor your session and reduce your own personal distractions. Right now, I'm in gallery view, which shows everyone's window as the same size. If we would like to highlight the speaker view, it will show the video or the profile picture of whoever was speaking, or in this case, who was speaking last. We can hover over our own name and we can choose to hide the self view. Now keep in mind, my camera is still on, all my participants can see it, I cannot. Virtual backgrounds are a great way to show off photos or videos that you found, or even better, taken yourself and edited yourself. Not only are virtual backgrounds fun and attractive, but we can use virtual backgrounds to give content during our presentations and our sessions without sharing our screen. This is key if we want to keep our video large without sharing a PowerPoint, which makes our video a small thumbnail. You can load instructions, you can load data, and you can interact with that as much as you'd like, changing it throughout the session. Asking participants to change their screen name helps clarify information, especially if they're not displaying the real name, and we can add other information as an icebreaker or later in the session, asking them to answer any questions that we want. Simply hover over your name or as the host, any guest name, click rename and ask people to update their information. That will be displayed in the participants box as well as underneath their video throughout the session. Another great Zoom feature is the waiting room. Right now, I have two guests in my waiting room, and I can allow them to come in whenever I'm ready to start the meeting, or if those guests are late and I don't want them to interrupt an activity or a discussion, I can keep them in the waiting room until I'm ready to let them in. If you go to your security settings at the bottom of your Zoom meeting, you can enable the waiting room or disable it anytime you want during that meeting. If you would like to communicate with people in the waiting room, just open your chat box and you can choose the option to talk with everyone in the waiting room. Next, once you're ready to allow people in, you can admit them, they will join the meeting, and anytime you want to remove somebody, you can click on their video or their name in the participants box, put them back in the waiting room. This is great if we would like to have a private discussion without some of the other guests. For virtual facilitation and training, the single most useful Zoom feature are the breakout rooms. These allow small group discussions and they use audio and video to keep your participants' attention. In the Zoom taskbar at the bottom, go to breakout rooms and you can choose how many you want. And if you would like to assign people automatically or manually, you can also prearrange these breakout rooms in your account settings before your meeting if you have all of your participants' emails. In the breakout rooms, I can broadcast a message to everybody and they can flag me if they need help, but there's no more two-way communication between breakout rooms, even with the host. So what I'd like to do is put something in the chat box that lets them have some instructions or information. So I might put instructions here. And when the participants are in their breakout rooms, they will be able to open the chat box and see all the previous chats, but new chats will only go to the people in their breakout rooms. Now I'm in breakout room number one with one of my guests, and you can see at the top the remaining time for that breakout room. At any time from any breakout room or the main room, I can choose to broadcast a message. This will go to everyone in every single breakout room, and it will appear at the top of all the participant screens. I can move participants anytime I want to different rooms. I can join other rooms, or I can simply close them to bring everybody back. Another great tip for breakout rooms is allowing your participants to freely move from one room to another whenever they want. Now, by default, an 
attendee in Zoom cannot move from breakout room to breakout room. The host or co-host would have to manually move them. If you make your participants host or co-host, this allows them to have control to move from one breakout room to another. Now, be aware of two things. If you decide to make somebody the host, it will make you, the facilitator, a co-host. So that gives them a lot of power. The other thing to be aware of is if you make everyone a co-host, it will give them more permissions in what they can do in Zoom. So you might want to have a look at your account settings for what co-host can and can't do, and make sure you really do trust all your participants. Getting information from our participants in Zoom is very fast and easy. We can always chat, but if we have a yes or no question, we can ask people to use the reactions in the participant box. For example, is everyone okay to stay until 5 p.m.? We can do a very quick visual poll that way. If we would like to have a more detailed poll with multiple options, we can go to our polling tool in the toolbar. Once a poll has been created through our account settings, back in the Zoom meeting, we can open the polls tool. Here, we can review the questions and we can launch the poll for our participants. As the participants answer these questions, we can see their answers come in live. And we can choose to end the poll whenever we want. Next, it allows us to review these poll answers before we share the results on the screen with all of the participants. We can stop sharing those poll results at any time, and we can choose to share those results or relaunch the poll. Another great tool for viewing and collaborating with annotations is the whiteboard and sharing other types of files. If you go to the share screen option, you can choose to share your whiteboard, and this is exactly what your participants will see on their screen. If they go to their view options, they can choose the annotation toolbar, which allows me and also the participants to type, to draw, to use different kinds of stamps, to erase, and also format their lines and their fonts. Here I'm sharing an image, and you can see the green line around this image, which means it's being shared with my participants. I have the same annotation toolbar, and so will my participants. Another great sharing option is sharing live video and or audio with your participants. When we go into the share screen options, if you have a video or a web browser with a video open, we can choose that. And as we play this, the video and the audio will play directly to your participants in the Zoom window. Another great sharing option is sharing content from a second camera. If you have physical documents or if you have some kind of stage area set up where you might be giving a formal presentation and you'd like to stand up. Now, what I'm doing is sharing exactly what I would see on my phone. Here, I've got the basic iPhone camera app. So I've got a document and it allows me to make real-time notes and changes switching things out, placing physical objects wherever I want in that view. We hope you've enjoyed learning about these Zoom features and tips. If you have any questions, we would love to hear from you.